Hi everyone, so in today's lesson we'll be building a lift. So for me personally, I'll be catting a one bar lift in this video. However, if you feel more comfortable with all this inventory and you're confident in your skills, feel free to challenge yourself and try to make a more complicated lift. You can try a four bar, six bar, or whatever else you want to try and cat. For those of you who may not feel confident enough to build a lift on your own, but you still want to challenge, you can go ahead and try to cat a one bar by yourself and refer to this video as you go along. But for those of you who still aren't super comfortable with all the desk inventor, no worries, I'll be going over how to cat this one bar lift that you see on the screen in this video, so just feel free to watch it and follow along. Just as a quick general note, this video will go at a slightly faster pace than some of our previous CAD videos. At this point, you guys should be pretty comfortable with Autodesk Inventor, and I don't introduce you to any new features. These are all features you already know how to use and have been using over the pa past couple of lessons and videos. So on screen right now, I include the timestamps for this video, so feel free to Fast forward to any section you want. I'll keep this up for a couple of seconds and I'll start by opening a new assembly file. Once you have Autodesk Inventor open, we're going to create a new assembly file. To create a new assembly file, please hit new at the top left of your screen. You're then going to go under assembly and click standard. Once you have standard selected, please hit create at the bottom right. If you get this error message, please do not worry, just hit OK and continue on. Once you have your assembly file opened, we're going to save it. To save it, please hit the save icon at the top left of your screen. We're then going to go find our project folder. If you do not have your project folder currently selected, remember you're going to hit the drop down menu. You're going to go under documents. You're then going to go under inventor. You should then see your project folder. Please select on your project folder. Once you have it opened, we're going to name it. So for today's lesson, we're going to make a lift. So I'm going to name this lift tutorial. And once you have named it, please hit save. Once you hit save, you should notice the name of your file has now changed. So just as a quick reminder, in this video, we're going to build a one bar lift. If you are feeling confident with your skills in Inventor and feel like you don't necessarily need to follow this video, please go ahead and try to build something more complicated. You can try to build a four bar or some other kind of lift if you like. But for those of you who still need a guide, please go ahead and watch this video. We're just going to build a simple one bar. As another reminder, as I said before, this video is going to go at a faster pace. At this point, you all should be decently comfortable with Autodesk Inventor. And all, everything I'm going to be using in this video we've covered before, so you should know how to do everything I will be doing in this video. So as usual, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place in our part. We're going to start with the towers of our one, ba one bar lift. So I'm just going to place in two 25 hole long C channels. So we're going to go up here to the left, I'm going to hit on place. So once you click on place, our file explorer should pop up again. We're going to again go under our part library like normal. Your part library should be under your projects folder, but if you don't currently have your projects folder selected, again, you're going to go under documents, open up inventor, and then click on your projects folder. Once you find your part library in your projects folder, please open it. So once you have your part library open, we're going to go under structure. We're then going to go under aluminum two wide C channels. And then we're going to scroll down until we see the 25 hole long C channel. Please left click to select it and then hit open. Once we have it open, I'm going to zoom out slightly, and I'm going to place two C channels, so one and two. And then you can hit escape because we only want two for now. I'm going to quickly 
hit the home button to recenter. So before we ground one of these C channels, I want to rotate it so it's facing the right direction. So we're going to do two rotations. So if you forgot how to rotate, we're going to use something called grip snap. So go, go under the drop down menu under position, hit grip snap. We're then going to pick the edge we want to rotate about. So I want to rotate around this edge of the C channel. So please left click on it. Go to the fourth icon, rotate about a line. And this time we're going to rotate it uh, let's go about 270 degrees, so manual right in 270. And then you should see it's now facing this way. Please hit enter. Then remember, do not hit escape. We're going to right click, and we're going to press OK. We want to do one more rotation, so go under grip snap again. This time we're going to click this edge. Hit rotate about a line again. And then we want to rotate it 90 degrees up, so manually type in 90 and press enter. Then we are going to right click and press OK. We're going to reset our part, so I'm going to hit the home button again, so please hit the home button. So now that we've hit the home button and we've rotated our part, I'm now going to ground this vertical C channel. To ground, please right click. Once this menu pops up, go down to ground it and left click on ground it. Now our part should no longer move. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add our standoff so we can connect this C channel to the other C channel. So we're going to add in four two inch standoffs. So please go up to place. And once you have found place, please left click on place. So once you hit place, You'll see under our file explorer, we're still under the C channel section of our part library. We want to go back to structure and then hit standoff folder. So I'll hit the drop down menu. We're going to go to structure. We're then going to scroll down to standoffs and please left click on standoffs. So once we're in the standoffs folder, we're going to hit two inch standoff. Once you have two inch standoff selected, Please press open. Now you should have the two inch standoff outline following your cursor. So again, we want four of these standoffs, so I'm going to place down four of these. So one, two, three, four. And once you place four, please press escape. I'm then going to hit the home button again to recenter our screen. So once we've added our four standoffs in, we're now going to connect these standoffs to our C channels. So just for your reference, I'm going to connect two of these standoffs on the two top holes of the C channel and two at the two bottom holes of the C channel. So we're going to be again using insert like normal. So please first left click on one of the standoffs till you see the two brick icons. We're then going to hit constraint. We're going to go under insert or the fourth icon. We're going to click the top brick icon and we're going to go hit the outside hole of the top right hole of the C channel. It should then pop in place. You can hit, then hit apply, close this menu, and then going to select our second standoff. I'm going to hit constraint again, go under insert, press the top icon, and then click the other hole right here. Hit apply once it's placed and close this menu. And then you're gonna select our third standoff, so this icon should be selected. I'm gonna go under insert. I'm gonna hit the top icon. Then I'm gonna go to the bomb holes. Make sure you click the right side. Once it pops in place, you can hit apply. I'm gonna close the constraint menu. Select our fourth standoff. Hit constraint, gonna go under insert, then I'm gonna click the top icon, and now the last hole. Once you have it in place, hit apply and close the constraint menu. I'm gonna hit the home button so we refocus on our part. So now that we've attached four of our standoffs onto this C channel, we're gonna attach these standoffs to this C channel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
click on this standoff until you can see the I made. But then I'm going to go under constraint. I'm going to use insert again. So I'm going to click on the I made. And then I'm going to click on the opposite hole right here. Should then pop on. And you can hit apply and exit the menu. So as you can see, we can still rotate the seat channel. So I'm going to just do one more insert on another standoff so it can't rotate. But another thing to note is right now, you can see the C channel are facing the same way. The C is pointing up on both of them. So now I'm going to re hit home and I'm going to do one insert. So I'm going to use this standoff to do the last insert on. So once you left click it, you can see the I mate. I'm going to go under constraint, use insert again, hit the I mate. Then I'm going to click on the opposite hole at the bottom right. Should then pop on nicely. You can hit apply and exit this menu. So now it should not move and we don't need to do any more inserts. You can hit the home button to refocus. So now that we've finished the tower of our one bar, I thought this would be a good saving point. So please go to the top left and press the save icon. Once this menu pops up, press OK and continue on. So now that we've finished the tower, let's build the lift bar of our one bar. So let's go to place. Please press place. So once you hit place, we should be on the standoff menu of our part one bar. So we're going to hit the drop down menu. We're going to go back to structure. Once we're in structure, we're going to place in a, another two wide C channel for our lift bar. So let's go under the two wide folder and let's pick out a 30 hole long two wide C channel. So once you have it selected, press open. I'm going to place this off to the right of our lift. So I'm going to place down one 30 long C channel. I'm going to press escape because we only want one for now. I'm then going to hit the home button to recenter our screen. So now that we have our 30 hole long C channel, let's add in gears for our lift bar. So let's go up to here to the top left and press place. Once we're in place, we should be in the C channel folder of our part library. We want to go to the motion folder. So hit the drop down menu. And let's go back to the home page of the VEX part library. So I'm going to go into motion and go under gears and for our one bar we'll do a 5 to 1 torque ratio so let's put in a 62 high strength gear and let's also control click a metal shaft insert. So now you should see the outline of our 62 and the metal shaft insert so let's place it below our lift bar. Just click once for now because we only want one gear. We'll copy paste another insert later, but you can hit escape. And I'm going to hit the home button to recenter our screen again. So now that we add in our gear and insert in, we need to connect them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three make constraints to put our insert into our gear. So I'm going to go up to constraint. Please have the first icon selected or mate. And make sure you have the left solution selected. And first, start with the flat face of the insert and click the flat face of the gear. It should snap together and hit apply. Close this menu so I can move our insert so we can see its sides. Then I'm going to hit constraint again, go under mate, and I'm going to connect these two faces. So I'm going to go this side of the insert. I'm going to rotate around so I can't see the other side of the gear. And then mate there, hit apply, and close this menu. And then shift this so I can see the last face of the insert. Then I'm going to select the last face of our insert. I'm going to rotate one more time and click the last face of our insert. And hit apply, close this menu, and double check our insert is secure in the gear. And then hit the home button to reset our view. So now we want to add our second insert into the gear. So to get our second insert, I'm going to copy and paste this insert. So 
I'm gonna left click, or insert, I'm gonna hold Control C, then hit Control V. And now here's our second insert. I'm gonna flip to the bottom side so we can see the bottom of the gear and the insert. So again, I'm gonna go do the three mate constraints. So I'm gonna go under constraint, make sure I have mate selected. I'm gonna hit the flat side of the insert. Then I'm gonna hit the flat side of the gear. Hit apply. And then I'm gonna do this side of our insert. I'm gonna rotate around. Then I'm gonna click the correct side of the gear. Hit apply. Since I can't really see that last side of the insert, I'm gonna close the constraint menu, scoot our insert, go back to constraint, and I'm gonna do the last make constraint. So I'm gonna hit this wall of the insert. Rotate around to see the other side of the gear, hit that wall of the gear, hit apply, and close our constraint menu. So, just to double check our insert's good, I'm going to try to move it around, and as you can see, the insert is good. Then I'm going to hit the home button to reset again. So now that our gear is assembled, I'm going to attach it to our lift bar. So, let's start by going to constraint. I'm going to use two insert constraints to attach our gear to our left bar. So let's click on insert. I'm going to click the top hole of our gear right here. I'm then going to click on the last middle hole of our left bar. I'm going to hit apply since it's attached properly. Make sure your gear is on the flat side of the seat channel. I'm going to rotate to the other side of the left bar so I can see the last hole the gear that we need to connect to and rotate back and then I'm going to click the other middle hole we would like it to attach to. So that one. And now you can see our gear is attached. I'm going to hit apply, close our constraint menu, and double check our gear is attached to our left bar. I'm going to hit the home button to reset again. So now that we've assembled our left bar, let's save our assembly file. So please hit the save icon at the top of your screen. Once this menu pops up, please hit OK and continue. So now that we have our lift bar assembled, let's add on our bearing flats onto our tower before we try to add on any of our axles or even the motor. So let's go up to place. Please left click on place again. So once you hit place, we should be in the gears folder. Let's hit the drop down menu. Let's go back to our motion folder. In our motion folder, since we want to add bearing flats, we're going to go to shaft hardware. In shaft hardware, you'll find the bearing flat at the top. Please left click on bearing flat and hit open. So since we'll have two axles on our left assembly, let's add in a total of four bearing flats. So one, two, three, four. We can then hit escape because we only want four. And then I'm going to hit the home button to recenter our screen. So when we construct our lift, we want to make sure our lift bar is as high as we can get on our tower to maximize its lift height. So that means since we're using a 60 tooth gear, our axle for our lift bar has to be, let me zoom in first, has to be on the fourth hole in the middle row of the C chop, so we have to have it on that hole. So to start, let me click on our first bearing flat until we can see the eye mates. I'm gonna go to constraint. I'm gonna go to insert. I'm gonna click the far ob opposite side I meet. Then I'm gonna click on the third hole of the middle row of our C channel. So one, two, three. And I hit apply. I'm going to rotate our bearing flat so we can see the hole. I'm going to pan down, hit constraint, go to insert, click on the far eye mate right here, then click the fifth. So now it's in place, hit apply. So now I'm going to do the second bearing flat. I'm going to exit this menu and click on this bearing flat. I'm going to pan down so I can see the next set of holes. I'm going to go to constraint, I'm going to go to insert, and click the far, I mate, 
So since we're using a 60 tooth gear, and then we'll be using a 12 tooth drive gear, we want the hole to be three holes down. So from the axle hole, so the axle hole is going to be here. So one, two, three. So we want our axle for our 12th tooth to be here. So we, I'm going to click here for our brand file to go. As you'll notice, the middle hole for the axle is exactly where we need it to be. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit escape to close our constraint there. I'm going to rotate our bearing flat so we can see the last hole. I'm going to hit constrain. I'm going to hit insert. Click on the far eye mate. And click the hole. It should pop into place. And hit apply. Close our constraint menu. I'm going to resend to our screen. So hit the home button. So now I'm going to attach these two bearing flats to the C channel. I'm going to do the same thing as the other side, except we're going to shift the bearing flats up one hole. The reasoning for that is if we have our bearing flats in the same position as this side, when we try to attach our motor onto the bottom axle, the bearing flats will get in the way. So let's start by clicking this bearing flat and moving it up so we can see both the bearing flat and the C channel when we zoom in. So I'm going to go to constraint. Again, we're going to go to insert. I'm going to click the top eye mate. Make sure it's on this side of the bearing flat. So instead of doing it on the third hole, we're going to do it on the second hole. So make sure you click the far side of the second hole. It should pop into place on the other side of the C channel. Hit apply. Then I'm going to press escape to close the constraint menu. And click zoom in. Click the bearing flat so I can see the eye mates again. I'm going to go back to constraint. And hit insert and click the eye mate and then this side of the and then hit apply. And then press escape to close our constraint menu. So zoom out and bring our second burn plot up so we can see it. And zoom in and reposition. Then go back to constraint and hit insert. And then click this side of the eye mate. Then I'm going to click the hole right next to our current bearing flat. Make sure it's on the far side of the C channel. Hit apply. I'm going to press escape. I'm going to zoom in and re click our bearing flat. So we reposition our screen. I'm going to go back to constraint. I'm going to hit insert. I'm going to click the eye mate. And then I'm going to click the opposite side of the hole again. Hit apply and close our constraint menu. So now we have all four of our bearing flats attached. So I'm going to reset our screen. So now since we added our four bearing flats on, I'm just going to quickly hit the save icon. So if you can, go to the top left and press the save icon. So once you press the save icon, this menu will pop up. Please hit OK again. So now that we have our bearing flats ready, Let's add in the axles for our left. So we're going to go up to place and please left click on place. So once you hit place, we should be in the shaft hardware folder of our part library. So let's hit the drop down menu and let's go back to the motion folder of our part library. In our motion folder of our part library, we want to add shafts. So let's go to the standard shafts folder. Please open it. And let's go down and select the three inch shaft. Once you have it selected, press open. So since we're going to have two axles, let's place down two of these. So one, two, and then you can press escape because we only want two. And then I'm going to hit the home button again, just to make sure our screen is centered. So I'm going to rotate our screen so we can see the other set of our box. So I'm going to click this car of our rotation cube. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go to constraint and let's use insert to place in our axles. So I'm going to click top edge of our axle. So for our lift bar, we'll have it on the fourth hole or the center of this bearing foot. So please click this edge of our bearing foot. You'll notice it's pointing in the wrong direction. So we're instead of using a pose, we're going to use a line. So please select the right icon on your solution. 
be able to notice the axle is now facing the right way, we can hit apply. We're then going to do the same thing for our other axle, so please clip the edge of the axle. I'm going to zoom in on our second bearing flat, and we're going to use the center hole of this bearing flat too. So click here, and hit apply, and close our constraint menu, and as you can see, both axles are now placed in their bearing flats. I'm going to quickly hit the home button to reset our screen. So now that we have our axles on our lift tower, we're ready to place on our lift bar and the tool tube gear. So let's start with the lift bar, but before we place this on, we need to put on spacers. So let's go to place. Please left click on place. So once the menu pops up, you should be in standard shafts. We're going to hit the drop down menu and go back to motion. Once we're in the motion folder, let's go to spacers. And in spacers, let's add a quarter inch or 0.25 inch nylon spacer. Once you have it selected, press open, and let's place it right next to our lift bar. We only want one quarter inch spacer for now, so you can press escape. We're going to press the home button to recenter our screen. So now that we have our quarter inch spacer, let's add it onto our shaft. So we're going to again use insert, so go to constraint, click on insert. We're going to click the top face of the spacer. So then I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to zoom in on the top axle. And let's add it right here. You can hit apply. And now that we have our spacer on, we can put on our lift bar. So let me pan over here. Let's select the top face of the middle insert. Then let's select the top face of our space. And it should pop together. You can hit apply and close this menu. Let me recenter our screen. So for our last part on our lift bar, let's add a shaft column. So let's go to place. Please click on place. Once we're in place, we should be in the spacer folder again. So we're going to hit the drop down menu. We're going to go into motion. We're then going to go into shaft hardware. We're going to scroll down until we see shaft color with insert. Please select that and hit open. We're going to place it off to the right of our lift and press escape because we only want one insert for now. Or sorry, one shaft color with insert for now. We're going to use constraint. And again, we're going to do insert. So let me zoom in on our shaft core. Make sure you click the top edge of the shaft core. And let me rotate our view so we can see. Then let's place it right here on the left. Again, hit apply. Close the menu. I'm going to hit the home button. So since we finished our top axle, let's move to the bottom axle. So the first parts on our bottom axle we're going to add is our spacers. So please click on place. Since we're in shaft hardware right now, we got to go back to motion. So hit the drop down menu, go to motion, please click on spacers. And this time let's add a 16 inch nylon sp spacer or the 0 0.0625 inch nylon spacer. And let's also select the 4.6 millimeter plastic spacer. So once you have the spacer outline following your cursor, let's place it to the right of our left, right around there. We only want one set for now, so press escape. And I'm gonna hit the home button to recenter. So once we have the spacers on, let's place it on our axle. So I'm gonna switch to the bottom view so that way we can see our axles better. So let's go to constraint. Let's go to insert, and let's start with the 16th inch spacer. So I'm going to make sure I click the bottom of the 16th inch spacer. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to zoom in on the axle, and let's click right here. Should place, you can hit apply. Then I'm going to shift over to our 4mm spacer. Make sure you click the bottom edge of the spacer. I'm going to 
then zoom in on our axle, then click the top face of the spacer. We can then hit apply and close our menu. We're going to hit the home button to recenter again. So now that we have our spacers placed, let's place in our top tube. So go to place, please left click on place. Right now we're in the spacers folder, so let's go back to the motion folder. Hit motion, then we're going to be adding a gear, so go into gears. Then let's add the 12 tooth metal pinion. So please left click on it and open. Let's place it to the right of our part. I'm going to hit the home button again to refocus. So now that we have our 12 tooth in, let's attach it to our axle. To attach it to our axle, we'll be using three make constraints. We start by flipping to the bottom view and zooming in so we can see the gear and the axle. Please go to constraint and let's select mate and be using the left solution. I'm going to start by clicking the bottom face of the gear and I'm going to attach it to the face of the screen. I'm going to hit apply. Um, since we can see the, this side of the gear, so click the top face of the gear. Let me rotate so we can see the top of our axle. And pan up slightly and zoom in. So click the top face of our axle. You can hit apply and press escape. We move our gear so that way we can see the sides. We're gonna hit constraint. Go on the main again. We're gonna click the right face. We're gonna then rotate our view. And then I'm gonna click the right side of the axle. It should pop into place nicely. And if I press the X button to close, you'll see the gear is nicely on the axle. And then press the home button to recenter our screen again. So since we finished adding our 12 tooth on, let's finish this axle by adding a 16th inch spacer and a shock arm. I'm going to shift to the bottom view and zoom in on our gear. Then I'm going to select our 16th inch spacer and I'm just going to copy paste it. Control C, then Control V. I'm going to hit Constraint. I'm going to use Answer to attach it. So select uh, that side of the gear and click on one of the edges of the gear. It should pop on nicely. You can hit Apply. Close the Constraint menu. Since we also have a shaft color on our top axle, I'm just going to copy and paste that too. So Control C, Control V. Click to Constraint. Go to Insert. Let's click on the shaft color and then let's click on the space. You can hit Apply. So, if you don't remember, in our last video, I showed you how to use the gear constraint. Basically, I showed you how to apply a constraint so our gears move in sync. To do that, we're going to go to the second page of our constraint menu under motion. And you're going to make sure you have the rotation constraint selected and have the reverse icon selected. So, if you don't remember, we want to select our driven gear, then our drive gear. So, let's select our 60 tooth or our driven gear and let's select our drive gear next and for ratio since this is a 5 to 1 torque ratio I'm going to turn 5 and then hit apply and close our constraint and if everything's working you should notice when I move our 12 tooth our 60 tooth gear moves much slower I have to rotate our 12 tooth more times to get our lift bar to rotate so now that we added the air constraint, let me hit the home button to refocus. So for the last part of our video, we're going to add on our motor to our lift assembly. So let's go to place. So right now we're in our gears menu and we need to go back to the home page of the part library. So please click on Dippin Hose Vex Part Library. Once you're here, let's go to V5 Electronics and scroll down until we see the V5 Smart Motor, please select it and press open. Let's place it to the right of our part, so right there. We only want one motor, so you can press escape. To attach our motor, we're going to use two insert constraints. So first select your gear so you can see the iMates. I'm going to go to constraint and click on insert. Let's click the top iMate on the motor. And let's click the hole right below that, so right there. You can hit apply. Let me rotate our motor so we can see the other iMate. Let me 
go back to insert, we just click on the eye mate, maybe rotate our view so we can see the second hole, and click the second hole. And then hit apply, close our constraint menu, and I'm going to hit the home button so we can see the overall lift. So now that we've added our motor, let's hit the save icon at the top left of our screen. Once the save menu pops up, press OK. So that concludes our lesson for today. After watching this lesson, you should have a fully assembled and working one bar lift. If you're feeling more confident now and feel like you can can a lift system on your own, go ahead and try a more complicated lift assembly. You could try a 4 bar, a 6 bar, or whatever else you would like. In our next lesson, we'll actually show you how you can attach our 1 bar lift to our chassis that we made in the previous lessons. Thank you for watching and good luck caddying.